welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 7, which is all about the income statement. So if you remember the accounting equation, it's assets minus liabilities equals capital. Um, are we able to define the words asset, liability and capital? Well, you should be able to by now. An asset is something that the business owns, or it could be an amount of money owed to the business, perhaps by one of its trade receivables, one of its credit customers. A liability is an amount owed by the business to someone else. So it could be a bank loan, a bank overdraft, or it could be a trade payable. So an amount that's owed to a supplier for some goods that have been bought on credit. And capital is the difference between the assets and liabilities. It's the net worth of the business or the amount that the uh, owner has invested in the business. So the statement of financial position then, a business will draw up a statement of financial position or an SOFP for short as part of its financial statements, which for a sole trader comprise two pages, the income statement and the statement of financial position. Now the SOFP is going to show us the assets and the liabilities of the business and it's going to show how those assets and liabilities have been financed by owner's capital. So the difference between the two, the amount that the business owes to its owner. And we're going to come back to that in a separate video a bit later on. So back to the income statement then. Um, the main source of revenue for any business or main source of income for any business is usually going to be from sales revenue. Unless it's a service industry, then it might have fees received. But uh, any business that's buying goods at one price and selling them at another, its main source of income is going to be sales revenue. We might have some other smaller sources of income. So the business might receive bank interest, commission, rent, anything that says received past tense, not to be confused with receivables, future tense, trade receivables. So anything that says received means that it's income. Okay, so wherever you see that on a trial balance, you should find that the number is in the credit column of the TB, um, and that's going to be your other income. Um, expenses, if you remember, are the day-to-day -day running costs of the business. So these are things that we pay out for that don't give us any lasting benefit. So the main uh, expense of any business is going to be purchases. Again, unless it's a, a service industry, in which case it won't have any purchases because it's just providing services. So purchases are goods that are bought for resale. Um, other examples of the day-to-day -day running costs would be things like wages, rent and rates, accountancy fees. There's quite a long list of things that uh, might be included there. So the income statement is where we're going to record all of this income and expenditure. So it's going to show us how much the business is earning from its trading activities. So overall, the income statement is built on the formula that revenue, sales revenue minus expenses equals profit. And profit is defined as the excess of income over expenditure. And of course, if our expenses are higher than our income, then the business has made a loss. OK, now the top of the income statement, we have something called the trading section. And this is what um, we prepare in order to find out the gross profit of the business. So the main activity, as we've already discussed, of any business is to buy goods, purchases at one price, and then sell them at another higher price. So the difference between these two figures represents the type of profit that is known as the gross profit. Just a reminder there that purchases are the goods that we buy for resale. And another reminder that if we're dealing with a service industry, we won't have purchases. We'll just have fees received instead of sales revenue, and we won't have any cost of sales. There'll be no purchases figure. So what we've got here then is um, at the trading section, just the top part of the income statement. Um, those of you that are using the Osborne textbook may notice that they use three columns for their income statement. I prefer to pare it down to two because I just think it makes it neater and easier to understand. So like with anything to do with our financial statements, we have to say what it is. So this is the income statement, who it's for. In this case, it's for Wyvern wholesalers and for the period of time to which it relates. So with the income statement, it's always for the year ended. Um, and in this case, it's the 31st of December 2016. When we come on to do the statement of financial position, you'll see that that is at a particular date because the statement of financial position is merely a snapshot of the situation at that date. It doesn't take into account anything that was there before or after necessarily. Um, so back to the trading section then. So this is the top half of your income statement and we're going to start with the sales revenue. So that figure, so we've got two columns here, the sales revenue figure is put into the top right hand corner. And we need to deduct from that any sales returns, which we might see as returns inward. So these are goods that have been returned by our customers into our business. That's going to be deducted 
to find a net sales revenue figure, a net turnover figure here. Okay, so the idea of the right hand column is that generally we stack up the, uh, the main figures and the left hand column is used as a bit of a working out column. These are not debits and credits, so don't confuse these two columns with debits on the left and credits on the right. That's not how the financial statements work. Okay, now this section here that comes after the, uh, the sales revenue is called cost of sales and we could label it up here if we wanted to um, or we could label it down here. Now this business has got a total cost of sales of 144850 and that's what it's cost us to make these sales of 244600. So the cost of sales figure mostly comprises purchases that have been adjusted for opening and closing inventory. So if we just take a look at this cost of sales section, we're going to put it into the, the left hand column because if you remember this is our working out column. So we start with the opening inventory, that's all the inventory that was there on the first day of the financial year and that would have been closing inventory in the previous year's financial statements. So we start with that figure, we add on the purchases, that's all the purchases that have been made during the year, so in this case it's 156,000 and if we've paid for any carriage inwards that needs to be added as well. So carriage inwards is the cost of having purchases delivered into your business. Remember carriage outwards is not included as part of cost of sales, carriage outwards comes further down um, as a, a running cost, as an expense. So once we've added on the carriage inwards, if there is any, we then need to take off any purchase returns. So these are returns outwards, not to be confused with the inwards that we had up here. So returns outwards are where we've sent goods back to our supplier, perhaps because they were faulty or we ordered them by mistake. So in this case, we've got 7,200 to be deducted. And then finally, we make a deduction for the closing inventory. So we would go around with a clipboard, value up the, uh, the closing inventory at cost price, whatever was still in stock at the end of the year, and take that off. So then we add those five figures together, or add and subtract those five figures to get the total for cost of sales, which is put into the, the right hand column. So now we've got the net sales with cost of sales directly beneath it. So we can do one minus the other to get to the gross profit. Okay, so that's how the, uh, the top part of the income statement is calculated. So we can then take the, um, the trading section and build that into a full income statement. Now I've abbreviated it just so that I can fit it on the page, but essentially you want to do the bit that was on the slide before to get down as far as gross profit. The next thing you need to consider is has the business received any other income? So discount received in this case, so this is discounts from suppliers for paying their invoices quickly more quickly than the uh, the normal agreed credit terms. So we add the other income on, we do the same if there was rent received, bank interest received, any other type of income. So that gets us a, a subtotal of 102,250. That doesn't have a label on it. Um, the next thing to think about is what expenses we've paid out for. Now make sure you don't include in here anything like drawings or any assets that have been purchased, so things like motor vehicles, plant and equipment, premises, none of those belong in the income statement. They're all going to be types of asset to include on the statement of financial position. So we just list the overheads, the running costs down here. So discount allowed, salaries, electricity and gas, rent and business rates. Business rates is, um, is paid in the UK. It's a bit like council tax. Um, businesses have to pay to the local council. Um, and then sundry expenses is odds and ends that don't necessarily warrant their own um, heading on the income statement. So it could be things like canteen expenses, might be some postage and stationery in there. Um, 4,700 does actually seem quite a lot for sundry expenses. Usually it will be a smaller amount than that. So the next step is to add these expenses up. We get a total of 59,400 and then deduct that from this figure that comes after gross profit. If you didn't have any other income, you would miss that stage out. So you just have gross profit minus the expenses gives you the profit for the year, that 42. 850. And that figure is what we're going to add on to the owner's capital account when we get to the statement of financial position. So the owner's capital would increase by any profit that's been earned. It would reduce if the business had made a loss, but it's also reduced by any drawings that the business takes out. So one final reminder, we don't want to see any assets or any drawings cropping up in here. Similarly, for other income, we don't want to see liabilities. If the business takes out a loan, we don't want that showing here as income. We need to show that as a liability on the statement of financial position. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an idea of how the income statement works. The best thing to do with this is just to keep practicing. Go for the two column approach, as I've shown you here, um, and just make sure that you understand how the maths works. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe 
and uh, watch out for future videos.